Today on the pregame show, we talk with longtime Major League umpire and recent Hall of Fame inductee Doug Harvey. And Doug, you're in high demand these days. I appreciate you taking time to talk with us. No problem. This uh, this is part of my background, part of my history. I I never forget where I came from. You came close for a number of years to being voted into the Hall of Fame. You fell one vote one vote short a couple of years ago. Did you start to think you might never get in? Well, the thing about it is. I never told anybody that I'm figuring on being in the Hall of Fame just because of that reason. You you don't have any control. I I never once told people I'm going to the Hall of Fame. What were your emotions like when you got that phone call a few months ago telling you that you had finally made it? Well, we had to be in San Diego so that we could get a flight out of there and uh, in case they did say that you're in the Hall of Fame. And my wife, <laughs> it, it was at 6.15 in the morning, supposed to be at 6.30 that they're going to call us. They call us at 6.15, but we're all awake and waiting. And the wife took the phone call, and uh, she just said to me, she said, Honey, it's for you. <laughs> and, you know, you don't know. How to act? You really don't. I mean, it's because of the fact they don't they don't call you if you've not made it. They only call you if you've made it. Well, we get a phone call and neither one of us knows how to answer the dang thing. What exactly did they say to you, Mr. Harvey? Congratulations, you've been elected to the Hall of Fame. It's that simple. Goosebumps, I'd imagine. Yeah, stop my throat up. Had a tough time talking. It's a wonderful thing. It really is. Doug Harvey joins us today. Let's go back to how all this began for you, because not many kids run around saying, I want to be an umpire. So when did you start to be an umpire? When did you come into that? I'd been umpiring since I was a kid. I started doing it with Little League and Pony League and all that. Uh, And uh, one thing led to another, and that's how I made my bucks uh, was umpiring all sorts of games and uh, oh I remember what it was it was Don Larson was pitching his perfect game and I was sitting at a bar with three or four fellas and I used to clean bars when I was going to San Diego State and uh, I was sitting with him was watching that Don Larson throw his perfect game and I said that's it and they said what I said I've made up my mind what I want to be I'd been hunting for what I was meant to be in life And uh, I said, they said, what? And I said, well, I'm going to be a professional major league umpire. And they all laughed me. They laughed me out of the bar. And uh, I said, one of these days, you'll see me working that World Series just like they're working there. And they laughed hard. Eleven years later, they were watching me work my first World Series. What about umpiring did you enjoy so much? Walking out there onto the field. Just get me on the field. There was nothing, I'm going to explain that. I used to walk on the field, and my feeling when I walked on the field was, bring it on, sucker. There ain't nothing you can do that I can't handle. And that's the way I umpired, and uh, it's the way I felt. I guess you had to be that way as an umpire to take that much abuse and not let it get to you. Doug Harvey never took a whole lot of abuse, (laughs) not very much. In fact, one year I had to eject Walter Alston because I hadn't ejected anybody all year, and I didn't want to go clean. That's what umpires mean when they say that you haven't ejected anybody, and nobody's that good. That's the way they feel about it. So I set him up and I nailed him, and then I told him later that, uh, Walter, I want you to know that I needed an ejection and you were the man. You had a quota to fill? Well, it wasn't a quote, it's just that you better have ejected somebody because, like they say, nobody's that good. Uh, There's only one umpire that was that good, and they put him on a cross. Did you enjoy ejecting people? No, there was no feeling about it. Eject somebody, it was because they deserved it. We're talking with Hall of Fame umpire Doug Harvey today. Nowadays, to be a professional umpire, you have to jump through all kinds of formal hurdles, umpiring school, the selection process, etc. When you started out, there weren't those kinds of systematic processes in place yet. So how did you go about it? 
Well, there were umpire schools, but I didn't have enough money to go to them. And uh, I'm the only, I'm the last of the umpires. Shag Crawford also did not go to, to go to umpire school, but he and I were the last two, and Shag's gone, of course. So uh, I'm the last of the no school umpires. And uh, what you see from me is what my dad taught me and what I learned on my own. My dad was a, was an umpire uh, for the high schools and the junior college and all in El Centro, California. And I never seen it happen before, but people, when they were coming in to play El Centro High School or El Centro Junior College, they would always say, can you get that guy Harvey to umpire for us? Knowing that he had four sons that went through school and were being umpired by this man. So I felt that was about as great a calling as a man could have. And uh, I, like I say, I learned a lot from my dad. What was his response when you told him that you were going to be an umpire? You know, I never did tell Dad I was going to be an umpire, except he found out what I was doing, and then when I got sold to the National League, I opened in Dodger Stadium, and I opened at third base in Dodger Stadium, April 10, 1962, and uh, my dad had driven his truck all the way from San Diego to to uh, Yuma, Arizona, and turned around and came back all through the Imperial Valley and then drove it back to San Diego, unloaded his load of uh, chrome and uh, drove up to Dodger Stadium, told people who he was, and they found him a, a seat. And I never knew any of that until, oh my goodness, probably... 20 years later, and he told me the story. My dad and I had a great relationship, but uh, he just, he didn't want to buy, he didn't want to upset me. He didn't want me to get nervous at all, and that's why he didn't tell me that he was there. And I understand him doing it. I just can't believe that he'd go in and tell him, well, I'm a umpire's dad, and I need a ticket, but he did.